Uh, this one is called The Prophet of Pennsylvania Avenue. All of these works were inspired by my readings of Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, um, also Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl that was written by um, Harriet Ann Jacobs and um, Solomon Northrop's Twelve Years a Slave, and it helped to inform my narrative of how um, people of color um, were very influential in the founding of America. And one of the aspects of it was religion and the idea of Christianity, the Judeo-Christian beliefs being very important and um, not only shaping how uh, slaves felt about themselves, about how the promised land is not here right now, but it will be um, in heaven after you die. Um, why can't we have a promised land here on earth? And um, I'm in creating this figure that um, uses the Jesus sto um, stance and alludes to Jesus, but traditionally Jesus has been shown as a white American, white. Um, and so this figure alludes to a black Jesus, and is this black Jesus going to save this neighborhood? This is called the Prophet of Pennsylvania Avenue. And right, Pennsylvania Avenue. Right, Pennsylvania Avenue in Baltimore. Yeah, and but so, why, why would you use Pennsylvania Avenue as a course to any other street in Baltimore? Well, it's an area in Baltimore that's very much derelict. Uh, there is some drugs and crime in that particular area. Mm -hmm. And it, I'm not from here, and um, my first time being exposed to Baltimore, I have to be completely honest, made me sad. And um, is there a savior for this area? Yeah. Can somebody save the people of Baltimore? that are in these conditions. And so that's why I use that particular figure. And that's why I use um, the, the allusions to Judeo-Christian Christian beliefs mm -hmm. um, and the Jesus figures in this image. This um, second piece here is called Are You Being Served? And that's very much um, a reference to the Exodus story with Moses going to the promised land and the Israelites going to the promised land. And this painting is asking people, have they been, ser been served their milk and hun honey here oh. in America? Um, if you look at the little basket that the guy is hold holding, mm -hmm. that's called the sweet grass basket. And you see those um, made in Charleston. I'm originally from Charleston, South Carolina. Uh -huh. And um, they're made out of natural materials. And um, these were just traditions that were picked up from Africa that have made their way to America. And um, you, I'm just wondering, have we been served our milk and honey? Uh, and from, a religious, them, from a religious point of view? From, not from just a religious point of view, but um, are you able to reach the American dream? Have you, do you have your white picket fence? Do you have your house? Do you have your two and a half children? Are you happy mm -hmm. here? Um, and how can you achieve that? Right. That's my big question. Now the next one. That one is called the Shepherd of Sandtown. Again, that's a number. Uh, that's an area here in Baltimore. Right. And it's alluding to the Jesus figure again, mm -hmm. and the Lamb of God. And he is the shepherd, shepherding his people. And you see he has a black sheep um, on his shoulders. So again, I am alluding to Jesus, the Christian beliefs, uh, and trying to figure out how they serve us as black Americans here now. I Honestly, I don't know. Like, I was raised um, with a Christian background. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it, I, I want to discover how that serves me. But it was, ta it was it's talking about hairstyles okay. and how the <laughs> military um, released this mandate on how women are supposed to mm -hmm. um, style their hair. And um, if you read the mandate, um, when I was looking over it, a lot of it applied to um, African American women and how they maintain their hair because mm -hmm. their hair is very different from um, straight hair and it has to be maintained a certain way. And so it's like if your hair does not fit uh, that standard, then you are not qualified to be in the military. And it's just a really interesting. How do you relate that to Solomon and Northrop? So again, um, it's about fitting into this idea of a country where we are um, 
all men and women are created equal, but it's not our standards that fit that. Or it's other people's yeah, standards. Yeah, it's other people's standards. There's a, a standard of beauty, a standard of how you are supposed to look, a standard of how you are supposed to be. And uh, many times it was not what um, African Americans were. Really wanted. Now, the second image. The second image is uh, called, um, for the first time, I am really proud of my country. Mm -hmm. And this was a statement Michelle Obama made in one of her speeches. Mm -hmm. And I remember listening to that speech and not really being phased by it, but then I turned on the radio or read an article and she was heavily criticized for making that particular statement. And um, I think it can be really hard for people to understand that there is this um, dichotomy of being black in America and coming to terms with America's history and um, how it has created this system of oppression for people of color. And so uh, people were making statements saying, how dare she say something like that? But I completely understand where she was coming from when uh, she made that statement. And I noticed you changed the color of the flag, yeah. Yeah, so that's the Pan-African flag with the African colors and the American flag. So there is this dichotomy that she is an American woman, she is the first lady, but her descendants are Africans. Hmm. And the reason why she's handcuffed? Is that the same she concept was, of yes, Solomon she was, Northrop? She was handcuffed with that statement. How, you're not able to make those sorts of statements if you are an American and you are patriotic. It's just that idea of patriotism. Who is um, patri patriotic and how can you be patriotic as a black American? Appreciate um, our history in America um, and be proud of this country. Right, let's get the third image here. The third image is um, called, um, I wish it were that easy. And so the big statement in this particular piece is the sticker that says I voted today. So um, what I was alluding to is that there is much more to change than voting. There has to also be a, a, a change in consciousness, not just political leaders. So there is a consciousness in America that has to change in order for um, people of color to be on a level playing field. And the reason you see the noose in this painting is um, it was alluding to um, how it was alluding to the fact that a lot of African Americans were terrorized mm -hmm. um, when they were able to vote. So people would come and hang people right before voting time to let people know, like, don't vote. Like, this is not a thing that you need to do because we are the people that, partic um, that choose our political leaders. And so that's why you see the news in that particular image. Like, that's in the history. Um, and the figure is looking at you like, I wish it were easy to change America by just voting. Okay, this one is called 13 Stripes, an All-American Beauty. Explain that to me, please. So, this is actually one of my neighbors. She's very dark-skinned. She's beautiful. And um, I was making an image of this really beautiful woman. And I think it's very telling that if you use the term All-American or uh, Miss America, the image that you will see is not of a black woman because I remember googling images of what beauty is and I saw all of these images of lighter skinned women with straight hair and hair and here in this painting is this um, beautiful black woman and she's beautiful and she's American she's all American so this is my way of reframing of what all American is and what all American beauty is it's it can be a person of color and um, what I have mentioned um, to a lot of people as I've been creating this work is that I think a lot of this violence that's happening among young people is that they are seeing and feeling things, but they don't understand, like, this is how things were set up. Like, you are in this situation because things were set up before 
before that have put you in this situation. So if you don't even have that awareness, all you know is you're just angry and you don't know why you're angry. And so you act out very violently towards yourself or other people. And um, I think if it was talked about, if we learned how to have these conversations openly um, with each other, then people would come to an awareness and people would try to like come up with real solutions about how to change things. I think that's the, the big issue is like, yeah. um, we're, we weren't having these conversations before and now they're coming up and now things are bubbling to a head, mm -hmm. which happened, that's why we have riots. Yeah. Um, people are just trying to be heard. Now you've, you, you've touched on religion, you've touched on politics, um, do you have any answers for all these situations? Are you focusing on why, for example, ministers of religion are not doing more? Or are you focusing on what politicians probably should be doing? What, what, what answers have you come up with? Um, I feel like this body of work has left me with more questions than answers. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the purpose and religion in Christianity during slavery times, it was a way to make people complacent about the situation they were in that then. It was because things were going to be better after you die. I saw the purpose and the Christian beliefs in the 50s and 60s with the uh, civil rights movement. It was a great way to band people together um, to um, just bring people together. And now I'm trying to figure out, well, I'm trying to figure out how can it work for us today? Mm -hmm. I think that's the, the big question is how can um, we rally behind this belief today? And that's why you see a lot of themes, the, the theme of Christianity come up in my work mm -hmm. again and again and again, because I'm trying to figure out how is it relevant for um, my life today as a black person in America. Mm -hmm. Are you religious? I have dabbled in everything, and <laughs> the more I dabble, the more questions I have about it all. Mm -hmm. you, know, you haven't found you haven't found the the panacea to your religious confusion, right? <laughs> no, I've not. No, I have not. I have not yet. What are you hoping for the people of Baltimore to do in reference to your work? Uh, again, I hope that an awareness comes through. Like, the big thing I think that I reiterate to myself and um, that I reiterate to young people and students is that you're not crazy. Like, things are not fair, um, but how are you going to better yourself in that environment? We're all in muddy waters, so how do you learn to tread um, in that water? How do you learn, when you get out of that water, how do you learn to clean yourself off? Right. Um, so you're not crazy. Things are unfair, mm -hmm. but how are you going to survive? And is there a way of people contacting you um, that you can talk about? Either phone number, email, or website? Sure. Um, my website is www.stephentowns.com. That's towns without an e, because everybody <laughs> usually puts a um, e in towns. And um, my email it's stowns at gmail.com. Okay. Now I notice you have co-patriot uh, as your symbol of works. Mm -hmm. uh, why co-patriot? So co-patriot represents the um, idea that um, in order for there to be um, um, the American dream to be achieved by all people, there has to be a level playing field. And unfortunately, um, that level playing field is not was not created in the foundation of this country. And so I'm interested in figuring out how can we create that level playing field that, so that everybody feels like they could own a house or um, have a job and just take care of themselves. It's all about taking care of yourself and being happy. So how can we create that level playing field where people feel like they have the opportunity to do that? Right. Very uh, laudable task. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, congratulations. Thank you.